Hi, I'm Neil Ranahan with Nintendo World Report TV, and back in 2016, I reviewed Star Fox Zero on Wii U for our website, NintendoWorldReport.com. It's been a while, and well, Star Fox Zero's reputation might not be the best. But to celebrate the five year anniversary of Star Fox Zero, I'm here to read for you, the modern viewer, my review of Star Fox Zero. A sense of familiarity pervades all of Star Fox Zero, the third reboot in the six games in Nintendo's Star Fox series. The new Wii U game retells the story of Fox McCloud, seeking to save the Lilat system and avenge his father's death at the hands of the diabolical Andros, hitting all the requisite beats along the way. Fox soars through Corneria as it is under attack. He dogfights with Starwolf. He does a barrel roll. He fights a lot of bosses that pay homage to their polygonal forebears. Deja Vu is a constant feeling in the adventure, even when it veers off in distinct new directions, such as the new Walker transformation for the R-Wing or the slower-paced Gyro Wing vehicle. The new control scheme, requiring you to control your ship with analog sticks and aim with the gamepad's motion controls, is the biggest diversion from what came before but it still doesn't hide the ever-present nods to Star Fox prior forays on the Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64 either. To that end, Star Fox Zero is safe in spaces, regularly feeling like a straight-up remake of Star Fox 64. The new controls aid in introducing more nuance to the experience, but as you might expect, they are still sure to be divisive. It's tricky to get the hang of processing two screens at once and moving your ship with an analog stick while tilting the gamepad to aim. Once you start to master it though, the scheme is fun and engaging, especially as the TV offers up brilliant cinematic views, while the gamepad lets you fine tune your aim to take down targets. These controls allow Star Fox to become more of the Star Wars-esque space opera it's always felt like, especially when the gamepad's novel use of 3D audio, as it spits out certain sounds and voices in a way that makes you feel like you're right in the cockpit. The only downside is that, the 3D audio drowns out the spectacular soundtrack that calls to mind old Star Fox tunes with a brilliant new touch from the composer of Bayonetta 2. At first, the new control scheme didn't seem all that necessary, but then I tried the control option that limited the motion controls and the contrast was clear. Even if the new controls are a little like rubbing your belly while patting your head, the game is far better and more dynamic with them. I felt like I had more control over my ship with the unique control scheme. Even if you are diametrically opposed to motion controls, Zero is balanced for motion controls, so a quote-unquote normal control scheme wouldn't even help that much. Aside from the motion controls, the gamepad doesn't allow for much more than sporadically useful interactions, whether it's the cinematic angles on the TV or the viewpoint of the Gyro Wing's little robot. The Gyro Wing, one of the few new vehicles added to the fray, is a nice contrast from the ever-moving R-Wing, but it's only used sparingly in a pair of slow-moving stealth missions. The Gyro Wing's hook is that it shoots out a little robot, named Direct Eye, who has an annoying voice and the ability to hack computers. It's ultimately not much more than a brief change of pace. Transformations for the R-Wing and the Landmaster make up the rest of the new vehicular additions. The R-Wing transforms into the Walker, which is an absolute blast to use. Everything about the little chicken walker, from its animations to its handy maneuverability, is awesome. It's simply spectacular, transforming into the walker in space, landing on an enemy ship and blowing it up as you transform back into an R-Wing and fly away. The Landmaster's transformation is neat but forgettable. The tank turns into a hovercraft temporarily, but the Landmaster is heavily underutilized, so you don't have a chance to explore much of the new elements, except in the bonus challenge missions. The main campaign features numerous branching paths, most of which you can't even access your first time through where to the wise, don't bother searching for alternate paths until you've nearly finished your first playthrough. The game will tell you when to do so. That's a little frustrating, but in due time, the secret exits and hidden stages start to reveal themselves organically. Each stage also has medals, which can be obtained in a variety of often obtuse ways, ranging from uncovering a nestled secret to getting a high score. They encourage exploration and experimentation, and also hold some fun bonus rewards, like the aforementioned challenge missions. You can roll credits on Zero in under five hours, but like past Star Fox games, the magic is in uncovering other stages and alternate paths. To fully see everything, you'll need to sink in at least 10 hours. 
However, a lot of that time will be spent replaying a dozen of the 20 total stages an awful lot. By that token, Zero is exactly like what came before it, a short experience with a decent amount of replayability if you're up for it. You can vary up replays with different paths and the amiibo usage. The Fox amiibo unlocks the retro R-Wing, which features old school Super Nintendo sound effects, and the Falco amiibo unlocks the black R-Wing, which has more firepower but less shields, making it quite the glass cannon. Star Fox Zero's tried and true format and style is, at times, its greatest strength and greatest weakness. This is a brand new Star Fox shooting adventure in 2016, complete with fun new mechanics, dazzling HD graphics, and a ton of secrets. On the other hand, it too often treads into remake-like feelings of familiarity. The level design is all different and unique, but the locations in the story are nearly identical. Zero is a great start for a new Star Fox series, but it's also a start that features a lot of the stuff we've seen before. I enjoyed saving the Lilat system once again, but give me a year and this experience might just blend in with Star Fox 64 since it shares so much DNA with that classic. So that's my original review of Star Fox Zero. Now here I am in 2021 rereading that and I do find it funny that I end that with making a comment about how give me a year and this experience might just blend in with Star Fox 64. You know, 2016 Neil was accurate. Uh, this game did kind of blend in with my memories of past Star Fox games. And I think it's something that that really kind of frustrates me with the series in general is that they're all really good. Like, I I mean, I love the Super Nintendo original, love Star Fox 2, love Star Fox 64, even really like Assault and Command's cool, 64 3D's great, Zero's fun, but they're all kind of doing the same things. It's, it's wild that like Star Fox 2, which didn't actually get a proper release until 2017, uh, that's one of the like, most like crazy original games and stories and presentations. And then Star Fox Assault is another one that actually kind of tells a different story, but that kind of got lost in the shuffle of being a, a GameCube game and it wasn't made by, wasn't made by Nintendo, it was made by Bandai Namco and like there were some rough edges of that that didn't seem to appeal to a wider audience, even even if I really liked it, it's got great multiplayer. But the series Star Fox just seems to struggle with doing the same thing over and over again. And I think Zero succeeds in a lot of ways with the motion controls. And it's something that's not for everybody. It really clicked for me. It was an immediately it clicked for me. I remember playing the demo at, I believe, E3 2015. You were sitting in like an R-Wing kiosk thing that they had set up. Maybe that helped, but I also know other people who played that demo who were like, I don't like this. Um, but I I really enjoyed that game at the outset. It just clicked with me from that demo of, okay, I have to move the gamepad and look at the screen and do these things holistically. And it's tough. It's a lot to expect of a player, but if it works for you, if it clicks, Star Fox Zero rules. And I, I hold to that. Um, picking it up in now in 2021, like, yeah, it's it's a little weird trying to go back to that. But at the same time, they tried something new. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't try anything new with the story or some of the level structure and everything. That's that's kind of another another problem. But at least the controls and the gameplay were, were distinct. And I don't know what the future of Star Fox holds. Who knows? I hope it's going to be cool. I hope the series comes back. Maybe we'll finally get that like that co-op game that we all kind of have dreamed of. But more than likely, they'll just tell the same story of Fox and the team banding together. And you take down Andros and like his dad is a ghost or something and like helps you out at the end. And and, and we'll just we'll just it'll be like Star Fox 128. I don't know. Well, thank you for taking this trip down memory lane with me. I hope you check out all our other Star Fox content from our director, John Raritan, who is a Star Fox super fan and uh, happy five years, Star Fox Zero. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more, all for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.